Thank you so much for coming to my talk. And I want to start it with equation. And I am still in the equation I heard before in the introduction. So I want to know more or less uh, how many of you have or work or have worked in AI or do AI research, teaching. This is great because there's, there, there are people in the audience which maybe know about AI, I suppose, but uh, don't know the details about AI. And this is what I want to talk about today. So how important it is to, to know what intelligence is about, what machine intelligence is about for all stakeholders. stakeholders. So uh, this is the second question. I want you to, not to answer now, but I want you to think about that. How would you define AI or machine intelligence or intelligence in general? If you have to, 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 to tell a child what AI is, if you have to, to, to work with other people and you have to, to, def to define what an intelligent system is, how would you define that? Would you use definitions from others Do you have all in mind? Or would you try to define something with your own words? Think about that, because all the uh, talk is about defining AI. Um, and this is what we have done in a survey uh, in order to study how people define AI, what do they think about a consensus definition, because AI is in the media in the last years, is um, living a reborn, uh, it is not a new uh, a new field, it is more than 60 years old uh, field, but a lot of people don't know what exactly AI is. And Sometimes there is a confusion in the media, in the public, in general, in society, in politics, uh, etc., about what AI is and is not. And we did a survey, so we interviewed a lot of people, or we tried to interview a lot of people, and are very happy with the results. Uh, starting July uh, two years ago, and we closed the survey one year later, but it is still open, so people can still participate. And um, till now, we have more than 57 countries, or people coming from 57 countries. Uh, not all experts on AI coming from more than 180 institu institutions around the world, uh, mainly from academia, so um, almost 80% come from academia, uh, researchers in their majority, but also people, uh, so educators, developers, etc. And not everybody working in AI, and this was also our, our purpose, not, not everybody working in AI. And uh, we collected until um, July last year, more than 50, uh, uh, 550 uh, responses. And this is what we wanted to analyze. Uh, some of the questions had to do with defining AI. So we had definitions from the literature, and we wanted to know how people think about that, if they agree with that definitions or not. And very important, why they agree or not. And we also asked it at the end, and how would you define AI? Because we did a pre-research study, and we noticed that not everybody is happy with the definitions that are already available. Or, in other words, some people try to define the new things, the new advantages, the, the, new, the new advances in AI differently. So we wanted to know, maybe you have a new definition, how would you define that? It was my, my second question to you. Um, we also had other kinds of questions. For example, if they have worked or not in artificial intelligence, this, this was the first question to you, and the big majority, so 82% know what they are talking about, and this is good, but we also wanted to have the answers from other people, for example, philosophers or mathematicians. Um, and this was other, uh, um, other question too. So what do you think? We restricted the survey to only differences between machine intelligence and human intelligence. So we left out animal intelligences and other kinds of intelligences. But we wanted to ask um, about, do, do you think we need only one definition of intelligence? Or do you think we have 
to have separate definitions of intelligence. For example, if, if we define intelligence in humans, this should be differently done as when, you, when we define intelligence in machines. And all the media, all the hype sometimes we have now is artificial intelligence, machine intelligence. So we have to, to know uh, what the systems are and what is not an intelligent system. So this is very important. So the distinction, should we use the same definition as for humans? is valid, and we wanted to know, and this was not so evident. So 80% of the people think we, have, we should have separate definitions. And this is valid because it depends on the context you have, and you cannot. So now we say uh, machines are intelligent but, intelligent, but 10 years ago we also said machines are intelligent if they do this and that and that, and now that they can do that, we say they are not intelligent anymore. No, that is not so. A sign of intelligence, maybe if they are creative, if they are I, I, something else, so other properties. So it changes with time. It changes with the development of AI. Um, to give you an idea about some other uh, over, um, overview questions, it's these, these two, so there are others. But uh, a lot of people think that it, uh, it does not pay uh, off uh, to, to have a definition. We don't have to worry about that. One, uh, so I don't want to mention names now, but um, some even think it is like pornography. When I see it, I know what it is. And I am not so happy with that. Uh, and a lot of people think that it is not important to define AI. I will give you some reasons why it is important to define it. And a lot of people think, so the, the, the ones that uh, strongly uh, agree or agree uh, with having a consensus definition to reach an agreement upon AI is possible, is very comforting. So we are, we are happy that a lot of people think, yes, we, we can at least know the boundaries uh, of the discourse about AI and, and what is not AI. So this is what we took and uh, we wanted then to analyze and to drive our research. We, we thought about different uh, possible reasons why there is no definition of AI. This was the first thing we, we, we wanted to study. And it is a very polarizing con concept. Since the uh, mm, foundation of the field more than 60 years ago. So a lot of different researchers, academicians, etc., try to define AI differently. And then when you have a definition, then comes a different person and say, no, but we have to add this and that and that. Um, also because a lot of different people try to give the perspective with the, uh, with the, with the places that they, they have. So they, they, they are inherently contextual. And the interdisciplinarity also is a ground for having different uh, ideas about what intelligence is. For example, neuroscientists, psychologists, etc., think uh, that intelligence is something, but then you have a guy in artificial intelligence doing uh, deep learning and think, no, but this is not artificial intelligence, this is something else. So it is, okay, it is uh, uh, something that, that happens, and, and, and of course for several reasons. Um, but now we have, with the uh, emergence of the computer power, um, more data, etc., a reborn of very different old areas of AI. Machine learning is not a new area, it is an old area in AI, that we have different applications, new applications, and it is constantly evolving what we think is intelligent or not. So like Lipton say, this is a moving target. So it changes with time, with the development of AI. But consensus is needed because, and we see it now in the, in the, in the media, in the news, in the discourse, in, uh, politics with the um, um, society, etc., that we need, for example, regulations. And uh, if we need regulations, governance of AI, then we cannot have regulations without knowing what we want to regulate. Uh, also because of transparency, sustainability, responsible AI, so we want systems that improve human uh, well-being. And for that we have to define what intelligence is or what these intelligence systems are. But we also want to document, to understand what AI is historically 
and it is very difficult to track the definitions. But also the media and the hype, which is most of the times uh, not very favorable, and create expectations of what AI is, is that it is not. And um, this has also disadvantages. For example, funding going to areas okay, where they are uh, having a, a rapid development now, but not to other areas where it's also important to do research that belong also to AI. AI is not only machine learning. There are a lot of other different subfields that are part of AI. And for that, we think it is very important to know what the I in this AI is. Three questions that guided our research are the following ones. So we wanted to distinguish and to know how the people think, what the people think about different definitions of AI from the literature, machine intelligence, but also what the people think about definitions of human intelligence in order to compare. We wanted also to know about uh, the differences between human and machine intelligence. Should we have really two different kinds of definitions, yes or no, and why. And also, which capabilities should be considered when we, when we define intelligence? What is not intelligence anymore in machines, for example, and why? Uh, other research sub-goals, it was not at the beginning of our study, uh, were to, to define quality criteria for definitions. Okay, we are talking about definitions, but do you know how to define a definition? So we have to, 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 to keep a, a step back. What is a well definition of anything, of something? Not AI, but also privacy, for example. Fairness, trust. How do you define a concept and how do you define that well? Because supposedly, defining something is trying to, to reach consensus between a lot of parties to try to, 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 to understand the concept you are defining. So how do you define this well? And this was some part of the research we didn't thought at the beginning. It was so important. Uh, and we, I will talk about that too in the next, in the next few minutes. We also uh, analyzed responses uh, of the, and, and comments from the respondents. There were more than 4,000 comments we collected. So you remember I told you, yes, agreeing or not with definitions, but we also asked why not, or why do you agree? And we collected more than 4,000 different opinions, and we wanted to analyze that. So how do people comment? And we have very interesting results. So they are cognitive biases, that people unconsciously uh, have when they define or discuss or argue when defining intelligence. And also our interest, our goal was also to, to, to have a catalog, a vocabulary, to inform the people also not coming from AI what is important when you define intelligence systems. To inform, for example, people that develop standards to inform people that regulate systems. If you want to regulate something that is intelligence, first tell me what intelligence is. So we provide you with a catalog, with a vocabulary you can use, you could use to define uh, what intelligence uh, systems are. First, the quality criteria for definition. So we, we analyzed it uh, and examined the literature on definitions coming from Aristotle. How, what is the definition? Which are the rules for defining the definition of any concept? We also analyze it, and, and because it is also not only AI, but software engineering, uh, part of my uh, research uh, and teaching interests, um, different criteria for software requirements, what is good software requirement is, and I thought maybe a combination, what, is, what a, a good criteria for, a criterion for defining uh, intelligence is. And uh, we also analyzed it through the, all the comments provided by the respondents, more than 4,000 opinions. And we came up with a catalog with different properties that sh definitions should have 
in order to be considered well definitions of intelligence. We think if you consider this criteria, um, your definition could be good understood and, uh, and this is good to reach consensus, maybe. Um, we also propose some iterative process. If you start from zero, how can we help you define in something? in particular intelligence, and it is some extension from other authors, what other authors have proposed so far. Uh, because maybe some of you have interest uh, yeah, uh, to know what the definition of intelligence is. So this was the most accepted definitions of intelligence from the literature for artificial intelligence from Wang. Um, and one of the properties is you, you have to exemplify, so you, you have to, 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 to give an idea of what intelligence is also by exemplifying what cognitive capabilities are, or what can be done or what not. And for example here, adapting to the environment, insufficient knowledge uh, and resources, finite processing in a timely, so um, real time, open to new changes, uh, learning from experiences, this was very important. So this was one of the definitions the, the participants thought it was, it is one of the best. It was not the first definition. The first definition, the most accepted one was from a psychologist. And you remember more than 80% of the people is working in AI. So they, they, they think a definition from outside AI, from human intelligence, is the definition we, we, we should consider. This was very interesting, a surprise to me. So um, this is one first conclusion. As the, the, the development of AI is moving, then we also maybe have to, to, to change the definitions. It is inherently contextual. And I am not saying we should have only one definition, but it would be interesting to, to know the boundaries, what belongs to, what not. Uh, the cognitive bias is the, the second one. So we analyzed it and we, we found a lot of different cognitive biases in the commenters, in the, in the, in the comments from the participants. Um, one of them, for example, it was strongly dependent on the position of the definitions of a, on the list. A, how participants agreed or not with the definitions. So the first one, the focus, the anchors were more um, agreed upon. And the last definitions, oh, disagreement. This is a bias, anchoring effect or focalism, for example. Other biases, the people comment when they have disagreement. When people agree, they sometimes don't comment why. But when they disagree, and this is also a bias, uh, they try to refute. They try to convince the others why something is wrong and not why something is good. So it is important that researchers, people doing AI, but also people not doing AI, are aware of the cognitive biases we have when argumenting, when convincing people, when talking about something, when defining something. This is very important. So we have some uh, work also. Uh, um, discussing which cognitive biases we found and what is important to take into account too. Uh, this is one example, for example, when people comment, these are the, the, the agreements, so they are mostly a, um, now I have the word in German, they, they do not agree with the definitions. And we, when they do not comment, the agreement is very, very high. So this is only one uh, example. So the cognitive bias, biases undermine consensus. If you want to reach consensus, put an eye on the cognitive biases that may be present. The intelligence catalog, so uh, surprise, we used AI to understand AI, and we came up with a catalog analyzing all this data from the um, opinions on definitions, but also the suggested definitions. So we uh, used natural language processing uh, techniques to analyze all these comments and um, the semantic uh, behind, so the relationships. We tried also to analyze the experience in AI, and experts define and use a vocabulary, a vocabulary which is different from 
non-experts or from novice in the field. And it was very, very important to, to try to select which are maybe the most representative words, the most important uh, um, capabilities uh, that should be used when defining intelligence. And we came up with, with some examples that could be used uh, in, uh, by de uh, when defining intelligence. So we say that it is very important to consider experts' opinions. We cannot only rely on academic definitions from the literature and also definitions from, from, from standards, etc. We should um, also consider experts' opinions because the, the, the field is moving very fast. And uh, getting cl clarity, of course, means that that we should consider that opinions. It should not be done without asking experts what do they think now and how changing the, the nature of artificial intelligence is. So if you really, really, really need a new definition, then we say, OK, that's no problem, but define it well. And we are providing some um, research, some results in order to, to help practitioners, people in AI, but also people not doing AI, but that want to deal with AI, that want to understand AI. So we have a responsibility from inside out the field to, 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 to tell others what is that and what is not. And I, we think we can help everybody. So politicians, people doing standards, people that, like I have in my university coming to me, I, I want to do AI and I don't know what that is, but I, have, I want to have AI in my processes in the company. So first, let's reach a common vocabulary. What do you understand? What do you think, etc. And this is very important. Uh, so thank you very much. If you have some questions or you want more details about the research, you can uh, drop a line and I will be very grateful to, to help. Thank you. As we started early, we really have some time for Q&A. Um, who would like to start with the Q&A? Okay. I'll have to run because we only have one of the sent mics here. Yeah? Uh, yeah, thank you for your talk. Uh, my name is Heike Rusk. I'm currently at TU Dresden. But, uh, uh, I wanted to ask about this defining the intelligence. So, sorry, this voice quality is really bothering me, but I, I'll try to live with it. Uh, is there even a point in... Uh, I think we can all agree that there are many kinds of intelligences. And for, uh, for everyday use, we roughly know what we mean by when we talk about intelligence. Because there are some features in patter, uh, patterns of behavior that we are observing. And those, in, if enough of those features fire, like something looks like it had an idea behind uh, doing that action or whatnot, then we qualify it as intelligent or not. So for everyday use, uh, this ambiguous definition seems to be um, pretty enough. And then if we are talking about AI in technical terms, uh, wouldn't it make more sense to just not use a big word like intelligence that has lots of meanings and uh, lots of possible interpretations and just talk about the actual problems we are dealing with? For example, uh, reasoning about the future, uh, introspection, uh, metacognition, uh, learning and whatnot, instead of using words like intelligence and whatnot. So is there even a point in talking about intelligence in this sense? Uh, because I guess it might make sense in a law text, but uh, then if we take the ambiguity into law text, uh, then the judges who don't know any, anything about this uh, will have to ask some expert for an opinion. And, in the Europe, it might still be okay, but for in places like the United States, we know what kind of chaos might ensue. <laughs> okay. So, do you want to answer that? Yes, this, this is some, uh, some opinion a lot of people have. And this is since the, the uh, not since the definition of the field, for, since the foundation of the field. A lot of people think, yeah, why artificial intelligence, why not superpower statistics processing? Which is what a lot of 
different machine learning algorithms do today. It is not, nothing else than something statistically computer power, uh, powered uh, computations and is that intelligence. So maybe if we shift from the word intelligence, then we have all no worries anymore. But we have it there, and we have it in the literature. And defining intelligence is maybe could be similar as defining transparency, fairness. It is an explosion of fairness definitions in the last years. And it is difficult to, 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 reach, to, 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 to reach agreement on what do you consider to be fair or not in an algorithm now. And uh, it is true. Why then concentrating on intelligence? Our thought was, OK, the field is artificial intelligence. I don't think the name of the field will change. So we have to live with that. Maybe we have different subfields, new ones. Now, for example, machine behavior is what is recently proposed. We should also understand how do these systems evolve, interact, etc. Why not analyzing them like uh, analyzing social communities, etc., the behavior of human uh, interactions. So why not then machine behavior? Great. So um, I, think, I, I think we have to, to, to be very careful with the terminology we use. I did my PhD 15 years ago, and it was configuring algorithms, configuration of parameters. This is very, very strong in the meta heuristics community, where neural networks, for example, are an example. And now it is called hyperparameter optimization. Hyper by parameter. This is a configuration of the parameters of the algorithms. So it changes. And uh, we have to, to know about that, that it changes, the terms can change. So we want to, to, to stay a little outside. How do you define any term well? Takma, there's a question in the yeah. first. No? Okay. So I uh, just like Quick comment and a question. So, with uh, uh, I think to echo a bit of the sentiment of the previous uh, speaker. By the way, Trent McConaughey, uh, Ocean Protocol, um, 25 years of AI work, so uh, research. Um, so I can see there's going to be different demographics that care about definition versus not. Um, you know, as you hinted yourself, AI researchers are probably going to be very skeptical because definitions keep changing. I'd rather just see differential equation to describe things, frankly. Um, and with the definition given, um, that would cover uh, any feedback control system. So will we be defining our thermostats that regulate the temperature of the room? So my question to you is, um, what percentage of AI researchers said they wanted a definition and what percentage of government people said they wanted a definition? Uh, we would be happy if we had more uh, respondents from the government uh, because sometimes, uh, uh, most of the times, they are the ones that make decisions at the end. And uh, the majority of the AI researchers were for a different definition of AI. So, so that, we had, that we have to distinguish. Yeah. And, and yeah, unfortunately, not so many people outside AI. It was 10,000 people we want, we sent uh, the invitations also in the media, uh, social media, etc. And 556, we, we, we could convince, okay, take part in, in the study. But um, we will be very, very uh, happy if we could have more people. This is why the, the, the survey is not closed. Uh, of course, it is very, very uh, specific now to artificial intelligence and not, all, not everybody. Uh, so some people is afraid to, of, of, of touching artificial intelligence as a field, think, oh, this is very complicated. No, this is not. Uh, but at the end, they are the ones that make decisions. So it is important to inform these people too. And I think this should come from the AI community. This is, and this could be, and you could use that in that way. So, and this is not, uh, so this is a reason why they are now people coming from AI, for example, AI et, uh, ethic, ethics uh, people that are in these commissions, and also AI people that are in these commissions, in the European com commissions or national uh, commissions, coming from the fields 
that are um, important now uh, and also um, part of the decisions and the what decisions makers should know about that. So I think this is a good sign. It is not all done till now, all the work that should be done. But I think this, this is part of something bigger and it won't uh, stop. We see in the introduction, it is the biggest challenge. So everything trying to, to be better or to optimize or to do a lot of things we cannot do today if we apply mechanisms that are already very well known, or maybe new ones, that will come for sure from this area, from AI. So I'm very optimistic. <laughs> uh, a lot of people are pessimistic about the future uh, when we deal with AI. I'm very optimistic. Of course, we, we should be very careful and also think about what could go wrong, and a lot could go wrong. Yeah. OK. Thank you. Some more questions from the audience? Yes. I should have put on uh, flat shoes. Um, how do you think your research can contribute to the discussion about ethical frameworks? I said so, I should have put on sporting shoes. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, how, this, how can this contribute to the discussion, which is a very, very top needed discussion uh, today, ethical frameworks. Um, well, the, the first, my, my first uh, instinctively uh, thought is Social. you want to define how ethical a system is. Parenthesis, disregarding whether it is intelligent or not. Parenthesis, close it. Uh, this is great. This is very, very important. It's needed now because we are seeing this, so how do people or do some companies, etc., use the data without consent from the users? So there are a lot of different implications that should be regulated and that, that we should know how ethical uh, uh, or how ethics are considered in these systems. I think we can contribute in the way, for example, trying to, 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 to specify better what ethics is, for example. The first thing. If you define ethics, if you define a system uh, to be ethical or not, what should you consider? What sh shouldn't you forget? What could be better? And this is why the quality criteria could help in this sense. But also, when you define that, when you have humans talking about th something, be aware of the cognitive biases in this way and this way and this way. And also, uh, if you have some catalog, some vocabulary that helps to, 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 to introduce new people to the field, to, to, to deal with a lot of software engineers, programmers, etc., which have no background in ethics, maybe. This is why it is very important that we include this in the courses and modules at the universities and also outside university to teach people what ethics means, for example, no? there are a lot of different concepts uh, we, we, we need to be aware of. Uh, we think that some vocabulary, some catalog or some uh, guidelines on how to define and what should be defined and how could help. So this is our, our uh, optimism too, that, that this can contribute in some way. Of course, if other wants to use that. No? But I, I suppose everybody's interested in, in doing something a little better, and we think uh, that we, we have contributed to that. There are some publica publications now being reviewed, and uh, my expectation is that a lot of people can, can read them and be aware of what we have done. Hmm. I think we've got time for one more question, if somebody has one. Okay. I'm keep on running to you. Thank you for your presentation, uh, Jesse Lerke, FU Berlin. 
Uh, I'm not sure how fine-grained your demographic data was, but I was curious if you did go deep enough to note if there were differences in the definition of artificial intelligence by researchers uh, in different areas of artificial intelligence and whether they're working with different types of learning, different types of algorithms altogether, uh, because that uh, they might have more or less inference, in, interest in the, the data side of the definition, for instance, or in the experience side of the definition. Um, thank you. Give me a second. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so, so we, we didn't ask which area or subfield of AI, but if you are a researcher, an academic, uh, or, or professor, or from which institution, from which country, so where do you come from, but also where do you work? Uh, at this moment, and, and uh, we have this, uh, this uh, data. Uh, we haven't been so specific in this case, so what do researchers think and what do they think about the definitions? We have a, a very um, 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 general overview, and there are differences. For example, philosophers think we only need one definition. And we should not be talking about differences. Only one definition of intelligence, and that's, that's enough. And, and this is very important too, because now in the multidisciplinary teams we are needing, we are including ethicists, philosophers, etc., and in the, the uh, truthworthy guidelines for truthworthy AI from the AI, from the European Community that uh, that were um, a com uh, European uh, Commission from the special group on, uh, on AI that came out a few weeks ago. One of the, 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 the things that uh, they propose is at minimum 200 uh, different, uh, 200 uh, PhD positions in philosophy studying and understanding AI. So this, this is important also to now coming, people coming from other fields. And this is something we have. Of course, we don't have big data on that. We have only 550, and or now almost 600 uh, participants. But this is also very interesting now, uh, how do, what the people think about the, the definitions uh, of the biases, etc. Most of the times, the discussions are coming from inside the community. But people say this is not intelligence anymore. This is only calculations powered by super powered machines we have now with GPU, et cetera, et cetera. 